Taking his fourth, Dylan Apollo Watt of 2012, is Adrian Devereaux driving car number one for Hodges Walter Racing. The reigning champion uh, doing a, doing wonders in qualifying. In fact, he has done so in most of the races this year. But we've had six different winners this season. You'll notice some guys at the front of the field that we don't normally see uh, starting uh, uh, qualifying very well. Anthony Griffith, both the Majestic Motorsports cars had great qualifying efforts. Uh, Ryan Matthews and his new teammate Melanie Cleveno. Uh, going a bit further down the grid, you'll notice both the Gesslers are having a terrible weekend so far. The Gessler is uh, not performing well here at the Nakavo Airport. This is uh, a temporary circuit, and uh, all the bumps and undulations here are just not really uh, are helping the Gesslers. They have they've had numerous mechanical and suspension problems in practice, and uh, well, they got a little bit behind the eight ball. It looks like so it's going to be a bit of a struggle for them this week. Another news. The uh, MCMA has been a little quiet after Kayala, but we believe that there will be more uh, to come from them before the round of Wales. And if uh, you're groaning at the uh, at uh, the news of that, then, uh, well, that's exactly what I was thinking. Anyway, I'm going to hand it off to Dan to start the 2012 round of Russia. Thank you, Lance, here at the Nakavo Airport. The pole is on the right side of the track, and Adrian Devereaux in car one got a very good start. Now, he had a, uh, it's kind of unusual for the Pullman to have a bit of a uh, disadvantage here, but uh, never mind. Devereaux got off to a pretty good start. Davina Henton, Jacob Eicholtz in the uh, 231 car, Lance sort of uh, neglected to mention him. Had a great qualifying effort there in third place. Here's Vitaly Karpinko, one of the uh, independent trophy candidates. He gets a little poke from Kevin Dwyer, loses the rear end, smacks the wall. Uh, no penalty was assessed for that. It doesn't need to be one. The exact same incident actually happened at the back of the pack, and is it Matthias Taubes, though? Already difficult weekend, couldn't have gotten worse. There you go. Uh, Yulia Nasova cut off Anthony Griffith, it looks like, and Nasova went into the wall on the first lap. This is uh, rather unfortunate. Nasova is uh, the hometown uh, heroine here, and uh, there's a lot of speed from the Cats, as both of them, in practice. Now here is Scott Bates in the 88 car. Oh, and kind of the same thing. He thought he was clear of Arto Kekkinen, but just misjudged that, went into the wall down there. Bates has uh, not had a very good week and either. Now here's Chris Johans and uh, Charlie Waters not playing nice, but Chris Johans, you can see, nice pass there. He goes around several cars. Um, anyway, Marcus Leonard, exact same thing. Marcus Leonard, uh, apparently he was clear of the two car though, so the uh, stewards wanted to look at that one. And what's Taub doing running wide? Oh dear, his race can't get any worse, can it? Uh, anyway, but Leonard uh, behind the eight ball anyway. Here is uh, Scott Stoyler and oh my. The 30 car of uh, Charlie Waters entering the pit lane, and he got turned uh, by the 74 car of Scott Stoiler. Now, that's a little out of line, I think, for this early in the race. Um, they said they wanted to look at that after the race, and I believe that means that's going to count as an incident in the pit lane, which we know what that means. Anyway, Adrian Devereux, as you see there, has the lead. Going a bit further back, you'll notice the uh, 42 car. Uh, VJ Pushanda already beginning to move up through the field in the Tutino. He's up to 29th place. This track might suit the Tutinos pretty well because uh, it's not a very fast racetrack and you don't really need engine power here uh, to do well. Here is Melanie Cleveno, the uh, TM Europe driver that Lance had mentioned earlier. She has taken this car from Rene Reckemere for the next two races at least. Uh, Cleveno is uh, running in TM Europe. She ran the TM Europe race yesterday and finished second after starting on the pole. Uh, Cleveno in this 12 car has uh, brought a bit of extra input and uh, when uh, you can insert the word financial before input there the team uh, uh, really needed I think what Melanie has to offer and so far a good investment she's running in ninth place here is her teammate Ryan Matthews now he's really struggled this year and uh, well when he hasn't really been struggling he's been really anonymous so now we've given him some time in the sun. The Majestic Motorsports car is having a very good weekend. Looks like the gas near is very suited to these bumps and the roughness of this racetrack. Here is Jacob Eicholtz having a very strong run in this 231 car. One of the Independence Trophy candidates. If he's going to win the Independence Trophy, he really needs a run like this. But he's got Luciano Savarol in the three car breathing down his neck. And uh, Eichel's better learn to be a very good defensive driver if he wants to keep Luciano behind him. Here is Vitaly Lovren in for Dan McKay in the 50 car. Uh, he ran here last year for a two-team. He almost scored their first point here last year before uh, an incident late in the race. While he was, uh, in, well, he would have been, gotten that point if he had finished. Here is Arto Kekkinen. Uh, really, the guessers are not having a good weekend. 
The um, bumps, as Lance said earlier, are just wreaking havoc on the Gessler cars, and Arto running all the way back in 21st place. We're not used to seeing Gessler this far down at all, so uh, they're just really missed the setup. They haven't had as much running as everyone else, so Arto just trying to hang on gets a couple points here today. Here's Luciano Savara on lap six. He's got problems, I think. I saw a puff of smoke. Or maybe not. Luciano's got some problems with that three car. He pulls it off, but they don't get it back on track. And Luciano Savara is the first retirement. Three-time car Alec Grand Prix winner Leonid Roderick in car number four is the second retirement of the race. And he goes out also on lap six due to... Uh, Mechanical problems. You see a cloud of smoke coming out of there. We're still in lap six, by the way, and now we take out three cars in one lap as Jose Luis Martinez um, loses the engine in the seven car, and that's the end of the day. I don't know. Oh, Ian Cooper, triple seven car, way out of shape there. Oh, gets a tap from Duff, and oh, he's coming into this corner way out. Whoa, doing some very aggressive defending. I think of. Um, I think Cooper made that move, just might have tried to take the five car out of the race if Duff had been there. I don't think he would have held up. It's not the kind of person he is. Anyway, Carlos Donzello in trouble in the 21 car. That's the second FinTech car. We're not going to be seeing him until the end of the season. And his Independence Trophy bid is in serious doubt after this. I'd have to say Donzello's uh, Independence Trophy bid is... Um, well, probably not going to end too well. Here's Yep, Jenny Kuznetsov, the, uh, another one of the hometown crowd. Kuznetsov running in 10th place in the uh, Black Diamond 19 car, which has had uh, several drivers in it. Uh, he's only in here for this race, and then Avery Holtzman will take the wheel back in Wales, and then after that, who knows? Uh, there's been some rumors Mika Pasanen could have a run, a couple runs in that car. Now, here is Kevin Dwyer. Kevin Dwyer running in 11th place. He's really not had the best of season so far. Just everything wrong seems to be happening to this young man from Minnesota. But here he is running in 11th place in the Team Star USA, number 72, the same number that his father drove to six TM Master Cup Series championships, which is a record in this series. Of course, Kevin Dwyer is yet to take his first win, but in his rookie campaign, he has done very, very well with what equipment he has. Arto Kekkonen is pitted on lap seven, and he's going to rejoin in 32nd. And uh, clearly, all the problems that he's having aren't getting better. They're probably getting worse at this rate. Uh, he's just going to have to soldier through here. Uh, Adrian Devereaux has caught Scott Bates on lap 10. Now, Bates is struggling with the handling of this car, but um, it's re he's really uh, not giving Devereaux a whole lot of room. But in Bates' defense, there's really not much of a line here. When you have a temporary circuit, the uh, the line is very narrow, so that when you go offline, your car is not going to handle as well, and you're probably more likely to wreck. There's not as much grip offline, and when you have uh, some walls like they are around here, it's you know not really in your best interest to go offline and maybe accidentally take the leader out. But Adrian Devereaux is not exactly a man of much patience around the back mark, as he just sort of gives Scott Bates a little piece of his mind, shoves him out of the way. Uh, Bates uh, probably showed his displeasure by that with making Devereaux run just a little wider on corner exit there. But uh, clearly, Adrian Devereaux is uh, very impatient here because uh, he lost a lot of time to Davina Henton, who's having a very strong weekend in the Volpe, when, she, when uh, we didn't really expect her to do very well here because she wasn't quick in practice, but she was able to do, put it down to qualifying. Now, you'll notice Henton has a much easier time getting around the uh, 88 cars, so Davina Henton having a... Uh, Easier time with back markers. Ian Cooper pits from uh, 22nd place on lap 11. And here is the um, Jacob Eichholz car. He's caught Marcus Leonard, uh, who pitted, which is why Devereaux didn't have to uh, get by him. And Leonard, a much more gracious back marker, it looks like. Uh, he generally isn't the most... He's generally a bit more difficult to get by. Here's uh, Tom Delgado on the 37 car, having a pretty good weekend so far. And the motos have not really been fast this year. But uh, the ongoing health saga of Tom Delgado this year um, may take him out of the car after Wales. We don't really know what his future lies, and that would be a shame to see him leave that car. Packer Carroll and Vitaly Karpinko both pit on lap 12. Karpinko, another independent trophy contender. Here's Ryan Matthews getting around. Leonard gives him a little poke, I think, and that's Anthony Griffith in that, uh, in that black and teal car right behind him. Griffith is having a fantastic weekend so far by his standards. He hasn't hit anything. Uh, except a cone in practice, but uh, of course that's not really a big deal. Here's Adrian Devereaux lapping Charlie Waters, who's, uh, well, Charlie Waters has already hit something. I We missed that, but uh, anyway, 
Waters has been encountered, and uh, Henson is pit from second on lap 14. Jacob Eicholtz has followed suit along with Lewis Kingston. Michael Sykes has stayed out. It looks like he plans on stretching his fuel a bit longer. Some teams believe that they can make this race in one stop just because of uh, how slow this racetrack is. Now, Adrian Devereaux finally gotten around Charlie Waters. Uh, we missed whatever drama Waters was involved with. And now Devereaux hits the pit line after getting stuck behind the 74. I'm Scott Stoidler. Now, here is Michael Sykes, who inherits the lead. He stretched his fuel a long way. Cleveno into the pits. Delgado into the pits. Chris Johans in the 64 is staying on track. So, Johans also stretching this fuel, and uh, Johans really needs a good run. He's dropped out of five of seven races this year, so uh, he really needs uh, help turning form here. Michael Sykes pits on lap 17. Chris Johans and Julian Asova do likewise. Nasova's really uh, run long here and made up a lot of ground on that fuel run. Adrian Devereaux in car number one is still the race leader. And you see right behind him, Davina Henson. Uh, most of the leaderboard there you'll see on the left side has been shuffled due to the speeds of the pit crews relatively. Some of the teams with faster pit crews have made up ground, whereas teams that had uh, slower pit stops just lost ground. Uh, there weren't really any incidents to talk about in the pit lane that uh, don't uh, just happen on a regular basis anyway. Devereaux in car one continues to extend his lead. Kirk Pliskin is out from 19th place. You see smoke billing on the back of that car. Anthony Griffiths really had the better of them all weekend, which I think is a bit of a surprise, but uh, the car, the red 42 car, VJ Pushanda there, has been the big hero on fuel mileage. He is actually the last car to pit. He's been, well, as I said earlier, pretty slow, but he pitted on lap 18. No one else was able to make their fuel go that far. So, Pushanda was able to actually use that extra hot lap and get in front of the uh, 25 car of Tenshi, so uh, Pushanda uh, could be the big hero here. Adrian Devereaux in car number one. He's still now, well, he's caught the 30 car of Charlie Waters again. So, uh, well, Charlie Waters round two, but now he's got Henton way uh, close to him, much closer to him now. Here is Jacob Eichel running in fifth place. Now, this is a great run from the uh, Arla driver. Uh, not a whole lot of experience from Eichel, but he's uh, uh, shown that he can hack it here with the big boys. This is uh, this track has been very hard on equipment and on the drivers, and Eichel just really hasn't been feeling uh, the effects of it as much as some of the other guys have. Melanie Cleveno, car number 12, gets a little bump from Chris Johans. She's been stuck behind the lap traffic. Cleveno apparently gets the message here and uh, goes right around the 88 car of Scott Bates. Uh, that was apparently a bit of a hurry up uh, signal there. Cleveno's running in seventh place. This is a great debut from uh, Melanie. She's actually a, a gotten around her teammate there. Now, some other people aren't so ha are happy with some of the back markers. Adrian Devereaux just showed what I'm talking about, and he's just run Charlie Waters into the wall. Now, I don't really know if that uh, warrants a penalty or not, but Charlie Waters was shown the blue move-over flags, but he apparently didn't heed them. Adrian Devereaux, though, has been losing time to Henton, and he just, just got tired of getting stuck behind the 30 car, who was just getting in the way, and that part of the track is wide enough to where you can get by uh, back markers, or at least you should be able to if they just bother to give you space. But Devereaux just showed, um, well, not a whole lot of patience there and just shoved the 30 car off into the wall. So, uh, well, they didn't give him a time penalty, but they wanted to look at that after the race. Now, here is Ian Cooper and Vitaly Karpinko. These two have been racing fairly hard, and um, Karpinko's been throwing a couple of uh, last-second chops on Cooper, and Cooper just got ahead enough of that and just flat out dumps the, 20, the uh, 84 car into the wall for 23rd place. The oh-so-important 23rd place. And they gave him a time penalty, which I'm not entirely surprised with. Uh, the 777 car kind of been a bit of a lethal weapon in the uh, past couple of laps. Black Diamond Racing's two cars are 9th and 10th, driven by Yevgeny Kuznetsov and the ageless Dale Roswell. Uh, Kuznetsov running a bit wide there on the 19 car. Uh, and we normally see Ender Construction on this car, but uh, Kuznetsov has brought his own sponsor package for this race, and it looks a little bit like the Toyotis, to be quite honest with you, only uh, uh, slightly different. Uh, here is uh, Adrian Dever, who's once again caught the back of the uh, car number 74 of Scott Stoiler on lap 26 of 35. So we're nearing the end of the race here. Uh, looks like everyone's going to need a pit again, uh, we believe. So, um, well, yeah, they'll have to. There's no way they can make... Uh, some of these guys can make this race on one stop. Pushanda might be the only one that can, but uh, Devereaux it looks like he's going to tough it out behind the bag markers, or at least the team must have told him to tough it out behind uh, Scott Stoidler's car. 
Uh, Davina Henton, the two Nomotos, and Jacob Eicholtz all pitted, though, on the end of lap 26. Very interesting strategy there. It looks like uh, they don't want to get stuck behind that wave of backmarkers. But Devereaux saw that uh, they had pitted, reacted, pit one lap later. Chris Johans on the 64 pitted with Devereaux. And uh, Dale Roswell in the uh, Freedom for Palestine car also came in on lap 27 with Adrian Devereaux. Now we're on board with the one car leaving the pits. I see a couple of cars in front of them. Uh, they're both blue, and I think one of them is Davina Henton. And yes, Davina Henton has taken the lead in the Volpe. The Volpe crew nailed that pit stop, and, well, Alan Hodges' team kind of blew it. So, uh, Henton now in the lead, and Yuli Nasova's really backed the down as far as pace is concerned. I wonder if Nasova intends to make it all the way, because, uh, really, I don't think it's possible to make this race on one stop unless you're driving to, for Tutino, frankly. Uh... I think Tutino might be the only car that could make it. Uh, here is Nasova. Now, Nasova's really pulling up to the back of Henton. This is this could be a very smart move by Nasova to stay behind Henton and uh, hope that whatever tell you get there uh, helps your fuel economy and that you can make it to the finish that way. But I don't think Nasova's going to win that way. Scott Bates in the 88 car, his day is finally over, uh, mercifully, because he's really uh, had a very difficult race in car 88. And... Uh, very unfortunate for the Oklahoma driver, he's had a tough string of races. Here's Michael Sykes running in fourth place. If anything could go wrong this season in the TM Master Cup Series, it usually happens to Michael Sykes. However, he's been a contender in just in uh, most of the races before something inevitably goes wrong, and uh, Flash Racing are very happy with him so far. Uh, anyway, we're on lap 29, and here is the order there. Davina Henton in the lead with Yuli Nasova. Okay, Nasova is actually trying to race Henton here, so I'm not sure if Nasova's team told her that she can make it all the way or not, but, uh, well, we'll have to see how this plays out. Anyway, Henton is going to have to do some uh, pretty aggressive defending here if she's going to hold Nasova off. Uh, we're not sure if Henton is, um, how well Henton handles the pressure of uh, running up front, but it looks like so far she's done a good job. Adrian Devro into the pits on lap 30. Now, oh no, that's definitely a puncture, so... Well, he dominated the early part of this race, and his bad luck has just gotten worse. He could have won probably all but every single race but Cariola this year if uh, things just didn't go completely wrong for him at some point or other. Lap 31. Oh, contact between Henton and Nasova in those two cars now. Nasova's got the run on Henton. Henton's trying to defend, but there, there's contact. Henton around. Davina Henton around from the lead of the race in the sixth car into the wall hard. Nasova takes over the lead. But that's a controversial incident. We're going to have to have another look at that. I think Henton just moved over on Nasova too late. And this was too late to defend the spot. Slight contact there. Uh, Henton got it sideways. Nasova's got a run on Henton. But uh, Nasova's got a nose there. Yes, Henton, I think, definitely moved over too late and just defended that position. Uh, to, it was way too late to defend that position. She should have just held the, uh, should have just held the inside line and played it defensive. But uh, it just went all wrong. Anyway, here we are looking at the aerial shot here. You'll get a much better picture of it. Yeah, I see Nasova's got um, got a nose here. No penalty to Yuli Nasova, uh, thankfully. I think that's the right call to make. The stewards ruled that Henton did move over. But uh, we did hear some radio transmissions that um, car number eight will have to save fuel until the end, in order to make it to the end of the race. Hmm. We'll have to see if uh, Nasova can actually pull off the one-stop and win in front of the home crowd here. Lewis Kingston in car number 17 is looking at a podium finish. He was on the pole here last year, so uh, clearly this is one of his favorite tracks. Uh, the Nomotos have not really uh, put out a good car this year, but Kingston is certainly driving the wheels off of it. Tom Nogato must be uh, crazy if he's not happy with his run today. He's running in fifth place, so he's also uh, driven the wheels off of his uh, recalcitrant Nomoto. And... Uh, I think Tom Delgado will be, his, uh, his uh, motivation will certainly go up after this one. Last lap, white flag, Yuli Nasova, we're going to run with her until the finish of the race. We come around the hairpin, and Nasova's car is slowing. Is Nasova out of fuel? Yes! With just under half a lap to go, car number eight is run out of fuel. She's got a massive lead over second place, Michael Sykes, but it looks like she's not going to make it back to the checkered flag. Waiting to see where Michael Sykes in the 44 car is. I, I don't see him much in the background. So she must have a, a much bigger lead than I expected. I saw, there's Michael Sykes way in the background. Car number 44. The one driver who nothing can go right for. 
in this season. Uh, all that's turned around is with half a lap to go, he inherits the race lead. There he goes, around the Silva, stricken Katziv, and Michael Sykes for Flash Racing. The Welshman who uh, is largely responsible for getting the next race, the round of Wales, on the calendar is going to come into that race as the defending as a race winner in the Master Cup Series and he scores his first win for Flash Racing and the second of his career after he won the round of Ohio last year and his first win on a road course in the TM Master Cup Series. Lewis Kingston came home second, and Jacob Eicholtz, the Independent Trophy contender, came home in third. Tom Delgado elevated to fourth place. Dale Roswell rounding out the top five. Melanie Cleveno, an awesome job on debut, finishes in sixth place after some pretty good pit work by the Majestic Motorsports crew. Chris Johans and Adrian Devereaux, seventh and eighth. Kuznetsov gives the home crowd something to smile about in ninth place. Kevin Dwyer in tenth place. An awesome run for the young American as he brings home his Star Eagle in tenth place. A hard-fought day by the Team Star USA boys over there. Craig Mummer, we didn't talk about him at all. He had a very quiet day, but he got solid pit work. And the former modified driver, who's only won his only modified race on a road course, by the way, comes home in 11th place. Strong run for him. Ryan Matthews didn't have quite have as uh, good pit work as his teammate. Vijay Pushanda was the uh, only driver to actually make the race on one stop. He came from the last row to 13th. Round of applause for Tutino. Arto Kakinen in car number 9 had to bring home the last point. And the reason he brought home the final point was, well, first of all, Ian Cooper got a time penalty in the 777 car, but Mika Turvo, who was running in 18th place, lost the engine with two laps to go. So that's definitely going to affect uh, Turvo's Independence Trophy bid. But now, let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship, and you'll notice that Adrian Devereaux has closed in on Arto Kakinen, but uh, a lot of the other guys inside the top 10 did not have very good days today. Lewis Kingston might actually be a dark horse for the championship in that recalcitrant Nomoto as he sits 8th in the title run, his podium results certainly uh, in giving him a lot of encouragement. Michael Sykes jumped 15 positions up to 13th in points, Tom Delgado 18th uh, in the championship jumped up 12, but you have to consider there are still a lot of drivers that have only run Cariala or just haven't run every single race this season that are inside the top 20. Cariala being a double points race has certainly wreaked a lot of havoc on the uh, drivers championship. However, Cariala does not wreak a lot of havoc on the Independence Trophy. Not really a surprise that Mika Turvo still sits on top, but you have to consider, Turvo on 246 points cannot improve his score, not even if he takes over Carlos Donzello's car. If Mika Turvo was to step into the 21 car for the uh, 21 car's last race in Brazil, Turvo would score independent points for the 21 car. The number 20 car sits on top with 274 points. Of course, we had two drivers split a car last year, Carlos Anzello and Alexei Stoyanovich. That didn't done too well. But uh, the option is still available for anyone else running the Independence Trophy to actually share their car. But uh, no one's really decided to take that option up. One more driver is set to run an Independence Trophy race, and that's Ben Atkins, the uh, driver who made a hero of himself at, the, at uh, the round of Decatur last year and finished fifth on debut. Atkins will be at the round of Wales at Orlando Essant, the St. David's circuit.